Good afternoon to everyone uh, who is with us watching. Uh, welcome to another EF Book Club installation. Um, we are going to be dealing with uh, Ngugi Wathi Yongo, um, Decolonizing the Mind. Uh, we welcome all of you for joining us once again uh, in reading against the coronavirus. <clears throat> Well, the initiative is simply to keep us, uh, you know, politically, you know, astute in the sense of the ability to be able to, um, as Africans and as, as revolutionaries, to be able to see the world for what it is. Uh, and Gugiwa Thiongo, in this case, is going to assist us in um, decolonizing the mind, as it were. We are going to begin shortly. We're just allowing uh, most and all of you to come in so that uh, we can begin uh, with our discussion. It is going to be a generally a interesting, as I find it, an interesting uh, discussion uh, of Ngugiwa Thiongo, who is an East African uh, writer, a, um, a very profound one at that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to begin uh, with his uh, biography. Um, we, we, we know that it is a difficult thing to do with an African. I know the debate on whether or not an African, uh, let alone African writer, can actually have a biography because of the interconnectedness and how we imagine a society that uh, biography in itself is a project of what may be an individual or individualism. Uh, which may be located in, a, you know, in a liberal sort of, a, 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 a sort of corner. In this regard, we are not going to be discussing much of that. We're just going to go straight into the text. There is an ongoing conversation um, in literature, in African literature in particular, uh, to that regard. So Ngugiwa Thiongo is a Kenyan academic, socialist activist, and is one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. He was uh, born as James Wathiongo. Um, you know, uh, Ngugi was born during the height of British colonialism in Kenya. He obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree from Makerere University in 1963, the same year that Kenya became independent from Britain. The following year, he got um, yet another Bachelor of Arts degree at the University of Leeds. Um, in uh, Britain. He wrote The Black Her uh, Hermit whilst uh, still at uh, uh, Makerere as an undergraduate. It was performed at uh, Gambala National Theatre during the country's independence uh, celebration in 1962. Uh, Ngugi published you know, uh, his first novel, which was called Weep Not Child in 1964. And the second one that he, you know, penned was the the river between, which was the subsequent year, the following year, which is in 1965. He worked as a lecturer uh, in the um, Department of um, English at the University of Nairobi, uh, and published a grain of wheat. Um, the grain of wheat obviously uh, goes into depth in which uh, it's, it's mostly, you know, a, a, a novel which is styled in a like flashback, um, um, you know, um, sort of um, flashback sort of kind of style of writing, which is kind of a linear progression of the novel. So you really have to be, you know, paying attention. It's, it skips from one you know, a scene to another. So it doesn't keep to a sort of linear form, which is a you know a, a, um, a style that Ugi employs uh, quite often, and and in many ways it speaks to um, you know reflection, to memory, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know to the ability to in many ways to you know recall events, and uh, also uh, you know he follows you know those characters in ways in which they tell the story from their point of view. So the pace, as he does speak of it, uh, also in, uh, 
in uh, decolonizing the mind. So uh, a crane of wit, which is one of uh, our favorites. So subsequently, he became a, uh, a senior lecturer and the chair of the literature department. It was led to him being instrumental in a movement that saw the changing of the same department into a department which advantaged and focused um, essentially on African you know, literature. Uh, the focal point then became African literature, you know, African text, as it were. Um, you know, he, in, this, in this period, uh, when he was in this department, he's, uh, he discarded his uh, English name. Um, he was born James, as we mentioned earlier, um, and he discarded his name in favor of Ngugi Wathiongo. Um, um, so he then became Ngugi Wathiongo as we know him now. In 1976, Ngugi Wathiongo uh, co-authored a play, The Trial of Dedan Kimati, uh, with a colleague, a friend of his, you know, Kitai Mugo, which is based on the killing of the revolutionary Kimati in 1957 on the front of the Mau Mau movement, you know, again in 1952 as a reaction against British-controlled Kenya. The Mau Mau movement of, of Kenya was a, a nationalist, you know, a armed sort of um, revolt against the uh, sort of British colonial state. You know, Mau Mau was an anti-imperialist movement which campaigned and hastened, brought closer, you know, the freedom of uh, the Kenya of Kenya uh, from the British rule. Uh, so it's also known that you know. Uh, Mau Mau movement was at the heart of bringing Kenya's independence. It is, it is the movement. And the interesting thing about it is that it was largely, you know, supported and its base was, uh, you know, mostly of, 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 of peasants. This is what is interesting. And we see how, um, you know, Ngugi becomes or how Ngugi's politics come out even in his writing. Um, even owing to 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 to, to Mau Mau movement, uh, the play was performed in an open air theater. It was not well received with the country's political leadership. Now, in Gugi's sort of um, life, um, he at at some point in uh, when when he did the play, he took it to uh, you know one of the villages in Kenya, uh, Limur, if, if, if I remember correctly. Um, and this came about um, when he was sitting, you know, I mean, if you've read, you, if you read uh, Decolonizing the Mind, you will know that, uh, you know, um, um, Ngugi was, was, you know, so, so majority of the stuff, uh, majority of, these are a set of essays, so majority of, of the, the, the text is partly anecdotal, so he, he, he you know, he, he sets himself, uh, at the same time from a critic as a critical writer so he then you know narrates uh, one of the days and how he ended up uh, you know writing or putting this play uh, in 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 in, um, in performance in lemuri so he says he was sitting one day on a sunday uh, and sunday was one of the days that he had to himself interestingly it's uh, one of the days in the bible which are said to be the days of rest so Ngugi was sitting one day on a Sunday, and a, uh, he says a peasant woman came to him and said to him, you know, we know that you are one of the people who went to university. We have come to ask you to give us a piece or, or part of your education. We don't want all of it. We just want a part of your education. Um, he said, look, I mean, I'll think about it. He let the, um, you know, this go. Um, of course, because he's busy, he says, you know, because that time I was the chair of uh, this African department at the University of Nairobi. I, I did not think I would have the time to, 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 to doing that. And also, I mean, it may be a tedious job, you know, to be teaching uh, 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 um, uh, people on top of what I already do. Um, you know, so, so Ngugi go on, and this woman did not let, uh, you know, did not uh, give up, kept on coming back the following Sunday, you know, consecutive Sunday. On the third to the fourth one, he realized that Norma, just uh, but essentially from that you know um, um you know interaction with the woman who 
who, who was pleading with him, who kept on saying the same words. I just came here to ask you for a part of your education, not all of it. Just give us a part of it. Uh, give to the community. Give to the to the village, uh, which you 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 don't live far from. So Ngugi goes on and um, you know um, does this uh, you know open air theatre um, and in, in and performs this, this you know uh, the trial of Didan uh, Kimani, uh, who was revolutionary. A part of the Mao Mao movement and was killed because of his political, you know, activism. So he says, you know, we used theater to push, uh, you know, uh, Mao Mao propaganda. Um, and he says, what is beautiful about this theater is that it's an open theater. Um, it does not have walls. So anyone, there is no, there's no one who's inside and there's no one who's outside. Uh, so in open space. And the concept of the open space is also, you know, uh, prevalent uh, throughout, you know, uh, or rather partly in the in the in the in the chapter of language of of, of the theater. So, uh, Gugin says, you know, um, so rather for me, what is interesting mostly, and what sort of raises a you know a light bulb, perhaps even an epiphany, is that he is essentially doing what Fenon asks of us. Those of us who, you know, um, went to university, he says, we make ourselves one. Or revolutionary should make we should make ourselves with the community. And it is in that moment where we make ourselves one with the community. Uh, do we, or is there a possibility for a spark of a revolution? He says, if we we, we remain as Ngugi was, you know, in the person of the African Literature Department, you know, and he does not make himself one, and you know, thinks through the problems of the people with the people, and leaves the you know uh, sort of armchair uh, you know um, privileged position of being the chairperson of being the lecturer at a university, and follows perhaps so insightfully uh, the perhaps the ask or request by this woman who says to him, can you please give us a part of, you know, the, the education that you have acquired? We don't want all of it. We want a part of it. And so, you know, this, this, you know, this is how this uh, uh, theater in, uh, in, in, in the village comes, comes, comes about. Um, okay, we're still on the background and uh, perhaps we're getting a bit excited and, and going in a, a bit deep. So uh, the following year, um, uh, Ngugi Wationgo published another novel, Petals of Blood, which portrayed the state of the country um, uh, post-colonialism. Uh, it's also important to, 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 to note that Ngugi does not necessarily use post-colonialism, um, but he uses colonialism and neo-colonialism. And I think it's something to pack in the back of your mind. And ask yourself why, uh, because I in in throughout his, his sort of making the argument, he does not see us as having, you know, gone past the phase of colonialism. Uh, he does not read us as sub in as when I say us, I mean Africans, um, as those who have gone through colonialism, but who are going through neo-colonialism, um, and and something uh, colonialism is something that has mutated. So I, I thought that I, that we should uh, put that, you know, also so there. So we are not necessarily in a post-colonial uh, uh, state, as it were, but we are in a neo-colonial state, um, uh, and 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 so uh, these are also evident, and language being one of them, yeah, and and the cult bomb as as, as he would say, um, uh, being one of it. Um, so the, 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 you know, the same year, uh, his play, Ngahikandena. Which essentially translates to um, "I will marry when I want" proved to be challenging for the authorities and was subsequently banned. He was subjected to a, to, to a political uh, onslaught. Um, he was, you know, being executed. So he was then, you know, uh, detained. Was arrested. His collection of books was confiscated. He spent the rest of 1978 in detention without trial at committee maximum prison. 
you know, uh, whilst in prison, who used everything he could find to write. You know, he would find he would find anything, anything at his disposal he would use to write, which is something we ought to be doing. Uh, you know, uh, or rather, in our case, we should be, you know, reading everything we can find um, just uh, COVID-19. Uh, and, you know, Ngugi uh, used everything, and this everything included uh, toilet paper. Um, and, of course, you know, he was, as, as he also, you know, uh, reflects that, you know, the, 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 the reason why does then would tell him that, you know, you're not allowed to write, um, you know, prose, uh, poems, sorry. you're not allowed to write poems. And uh, he, he later alludes to, 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 to why he thinks, you know, the establishment would not want uh, a, a writer like him to write in prison. So Ngugi chose to write in Kukuyu language around this period. He lost his job at the university, and upon release from prison, he struggled um, to get uh, any employment in the country. In 1982, um, he went to Britain to promote the novel uh, that he wrote while in prison, uh, Kayatani Mutarabaini, which was later translated uh, into English as, you know, Devil on the Cross, um, which, you know, if you, if you, if you know, um, if you've read uh, on the post-colony, um, you will see that, uh, you know, Ashil Mbembe's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, text that those essays on the post-colony, you know, allude to or give you the same image. So he paints, you know, the same sort of, he uses the same images as was discussed by Ashil Mbembe. And we're trying very hard not to not to go into many writers and to stick with, 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 with Ngugi. Uh, owing to political challenges uh, at home, Ngugi decided to leave uh, leave uh, uh, and, um, and and go to exile. Uh, he lived in Britain between 1982 and 1989. Uh, in 1983, he wrote uh, Peril of a Pen. Uh, this is in uh, 1983. Um, um, so he, he wrote uh, Peril of the Pen. Um, uh, resistance is a resistance to repression in neo-colonial Kenya. And three years later, he wrote against neo-colonialism and the seminal uh, you know, text that we're dealing with, which is Decolonizing the Mind, the Politics of Language in African Literature, which is regarded as one of the primary sources of post-colonial studies between 1992 and 2002. He was, a, he was the, uh, the professor of comparative literature um, performance studies at uh, New York University. Well, he, he obviously pens, as we have discussed earlier on, he pens uh, plays, novels, short stories, critical essays, and children's books. Generally, Ngugi, what the Ongo writes, uh, uh, or his writings uh, deal with cultural uh, and political legacy of colonialism in Africa. Um, so uh, since 1965, he has amassed a number of uh, literary awards, honorary doctorates, as well as professional, uh, you know, professorships from across the world. Currently, he is a professor of English and uh, comparative uh, literature at the University of uh, uh, California in uh, Arvin. So, uh, you know, um, that is as far as we have gone with, you know, uh, Kugiwathiyo in dealing with his um, in biography. Uh, we tried to do as much justice as we could because that background gives us a sense um, of how we arrive at um, what is colonizing the mind in the politics of language in African literature. But also it gives us a sense and the mood in which he wrote, which is the zeitgeist, the spirit of the time, what informs him writing the text and what is he responding to, who was saying what at the time. Um, you know, uh, and at this point, he was also writing in English, which is perhaps one of the things that he was criticized for. Um, but he is not only writing 
on this subject on his own. Wali Soyinka, uh, he like writes in the you know the literary gurus like Wali Soyinka against and for or with, um, um, you know the literary giants like Wali Soyinka. And on the opposite end, in this regard, being Chino uh, Wachebe, uh, um, who of course you know um, takes a different position from that uh, of Ngugi. Um, he does not, Ashil um, and Chino Achebe does not um, say we shouldn't use, um, you know, or, or shouldn't write in uh, our African or mother tongue, but he takes a different position to say we can't abandon this uh, of uh, using English. Um, Ling English is a powerful world language which can reach more people. And what, what use is it uh, to write and only, you know, um, be read by a few people uh, because if you write in uh, Hausa from Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria there are over 200 languages. So, you know, who's going to read? Uh, who? I mean, how many people are you going to reach uh, with your writing? Uh, you're already confined to that particular, you know, tribe or you know, ethnic you you write in 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 the, in, in 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 that language. So, um, of course, here. Uh, Achino Achebe is thinking about audience and perhaps also problematically is that if he's so concerned of, you know, uh, who is able to read it, uh, the question is also, uh, that can, the, the other question that could also be posed to him is, you know, what is the literacy rate or how many African people uh, can actually read uh, and write? And so, are you really reaching the people that you speak on behalf of as African literature is that which which reflects and brings about you know a, a positive image of Africa but makes Africa a subject um, but also is written by Africans uh, you know um, from a, a an African sort of a, 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 um, you know a, um, centric so so it's more African so in this case um, you know, Ngugi may obviously then makes the 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 opposite uh, sort of argument. Um, so uh, the first and perhaps most uh, interesting things is that you know Ngugi takes it um, even further as as not just in literature, but he also thinks of um, how we arrive at using English as something which is not just for the sake of communication. But it's something that has ushered in uh, imperialism and is at the heart of keeping imperialism, uh, you know, uh, uh, strong. Um, so he speaks of uh, two social forces. So he says, you know, Ngugi says, uh, the language of African literature cannot be fully discussed without meaningful understanding of, uh, you know, social forces that have essentially made it. And in this regard, uh, he identifies two of these social forces. One of which is in this case, we may put as a thesis, which is imperialism. Ugi speaks of imperialism both in its colonial and neo-colonial phases as a force that is continually pushing the African to work. And whilst forcing the African to work, it also forces the African to look, look you know, to the future, to look, to look forward. Um, but what is also problematic is that uh, you know, this is done through the, the use of the Bible and the sword. Um, so the African is forced to look forward. The African, you know, uh, you know, so the, so imperialism, you know, produces Africans as workers, tenors of the soil, as Ngugi puts it, and worshippers of the white men and nothing else. Because even when, you know, the white man forces the African to look, you know, ahead, he is made to look ahead in the terms determined by the master. So the future is determined by the master. So Africans' destiny or future or self-determination, you know, there is no sort of self-determination what, de what determined from without, which also brings us back to, 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 to Fanon, you know, who says, the white man was not only interested in colonizing us, you know, it was not only interested in putting us in chains, but it was also interested in emptying our minds 
so much so that there is a void there's a there's an empty there's an emptiness in us and the only way to fill that void to fill that emptiness would be to look outside of ourselves and the white man then presents himself you know, as the mirror we would then look into the white man to find ourselves to fill that void you know so 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 that is perhaps as 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 I was reading it uh, in 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 Gugi's sort of you know uh, uh, position about you know the you know imperialism wanting us to look forward but in, in its own terms so when we feel that void when our past our history has been you know made this wasteland nothing to be desired and even when it's spoken about it's spoken about as something that had no thought to it that has no history and something that just if if it ever is mentioned as something that happened as a as a you know a a action or an event out of thought so it says for us to feel this void this sense of emptiness looking to the man, and the white man you know serves as a mirror and as a mirror you know you as you would know if you look into a mirror you see a reflection of yourself but the white man in this case reflects himself so we begin to see ourselves in the image in the image that the white man wants us to look at ourselves so this process is one that alienates us from ourselves and for us to interact with others in terms determined by the white man so the african is forced to look ahead in the terms determined by the master so ngugi is clear imperialism continues to control economy politics cultures of africa so even in how we model ourselves even how we do politics um, we have merely inherited we do not produce from scratch we are you know what may be called uh, or what is called petty bourgeois you know we are the, the the best we do is is become you know a little man so so ngugi ngugi is not far off from uh, uh franz fanon uh, in that you know, he in many ways um you, you know can see you can see that um there is a conversation that is having not only with uh, the, the on on the question of language with uh, the, the likes of achebe who he polemically responds and you know where uh, uh, you know uh, sort of engages you know uh, the, this is so the, the thesis is the imperialism or rather the imperialist uh, tradition uh, you know the the, the 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 sort of the mechanics of it and um, the second one which is perhaps um, anti or rather is anti imperialism uh, you Know, a, a tradition which is a struggle for for african people to to emancipate themselves uh, which is in this case an antithesis uh, from the you know euro american based stronghold um, you know in an attempt you know to liberate you know uh, their economy uh, politics and culture to pave in a way a new way of doing life uh, a new way of uh, of of being in the world uh, a life of uh, uh, you know a life of self regulation um, and essentially you know a life of self determination but with language a life of self definition which is very important also going back to how changes his name you know uh, from you know james to 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 to, to uh, james uh, wathiongo to ngugi wathiongo uh, because the the, the, the ability and the power to self define to define yourself um, and and want to appear in the ways that you dictate in the world are crucial um for 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 for, for, for ngugi um and i think I, I thought this this ought to be made so ngugi notes that this endless struggle that the african people are seized with is essentially a quest to reclaim and take back their creative initiative in history through the control of all means of self-definition in time and in space. So um, 
So Ngugi, in this regard, as we we have mentioned, you know, he, you know, he he makes it, uh, you know, um, clear that this is a endless struggle. Uh, perhaps it's a, uh, you know, a pessimistic, you know, thing to say for him to say it's an endless struggle, it's something that will one day not end. But speaking from as someone who has gone through it, uh, and also considering that at the time of of its publication, it had gone through. 20 years, uh, you know, as as you know, as an activist and as a you know a, 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 an academic. So, because of of, of this struggle for self determination, Gugi asserts that the choice of language and the extent of which you know the language is put to use is crucial. He says it is central to the to you know to the people, uh, you know, in or rather. It is, central, it is central to the people's definition of themselves in relation to their to sort of to their natural uh, and uh, you know social um, you know environment. In the fact that you know he says not only to themselves and their in social environment, but he also says to their entire universe. So language uh, is is so crucial. He says it's central to the people's de to to a people definition of themselves and in relation to the natural you know space or natural environment they find themselves but also to the social environment in fact he says not only to themselves but to the environment that they find themselves in i think uh, also to pack a thought or rather to keep in mind the social environment is 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 equally as important because uh, when we start to speak of, or when we go into languages, we are now, um, we are also going to, um, you know, sort of speak to the origins of a language, uh, or how we become, or how we start to use English, where it comes from, and how a language is formed. And he speaks of language as a real life, you know, language as real life, before you speak of the spoken, before you speak of, you know, the, the written. So I think you must also keep that, you know, keep keep that mental uh, a note of a social environment. So, so that is why language, uh, you know, has been at the center of the contention of two social forces. Uh, he says in Africa. So in 1884, there was a Berlin conference. Um, in which uh, the capitalists came together in Berlin, Germany, and divided Africa, a whole continent, uh, you know, with millions of people who are diverse, with different cultures and different, you know, languages. You know, the Berlin Conference set and successfully carved um, African people to different colonies. This was done in their absence, without their consent, and their interest outside of you know africans interest um so this africa that we have in as far as it is you know you know or how so if if you go into the map the ways in which we are colonized it, it is through the use of language so you 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 always hear you know people say this is a a, a francophone you know country so meaning you know, a French speaking country. This is an Anglophone country, you know, a, a English speaking country, you have Portuguese, you know, countries um, or Portuguese speaking countries. And, and this, you know, this Africa that we have, that we hold on to, uh, these, you know, national, um, you know, nationalistic identities that hold on to, were determined for us. So, so this is a, is, is a powerful point because, you know, in the conversation about, you know, assisting the Zimbabweans that are here in South Africa, you hear people saying, no, 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 they must go back, you know, to their country. We, these resources are for us and so on. I, I think also something to bear in mind is that this South Africa that you hold on to was determined not by us, but for us uh, and, and not for our interest, but for the interest of, 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 you know, these uh, um, capitalist uh, powers. 
So, you know, Africa was then divided uh, along lines, you know, of, 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 of language. Uh, of course, it was economic, uh, economical, uh, and of course, it was political. So Ngugi, you know, insightfully points at how we have come to be the Africa that we are in. It is an Africa that obviously was carved in Berlin in 1884. The image we have of ourselves right now has been determined from without. So we are essentially colonial subjects. We, we are colonial, and, and this is perhaps the, the major problem I, I see is that as we are colonial subjects, uh, even those of us who are born outside of you know, colonialism, uh, and, and we said earlier that we are in neo-colonialism, but we are colonial subjects in that you know, we, 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 we are still living in a, you know, neo-colonial um, you know, conditions. And our reality is that. So, so Ngugi insightfully you know, points out. So the image we have of ourselves has been determined from without, you know, the table on which Africa was further determined, you know, continues to be, uh, you know, determined in and is in Lisbon, London, Paris, and, you know, Brussels. So this Africa, you know, this Africa we live in, this divided Africa is a child, a product, you know, that draws lineage from the, the 1884, you know, Berlin conference, where the greatest thing, uh, I dare say, uh, you know, to humanity was, you know, discussed, and the making of colonial subjects, you know, came about. But for me, and, and perhaps this is what is perhaps leaving me a bit, is in this project of, you know, colonizing or decolonizing the mind, um, in the project of decolonization, the major question that all sits with us is how does a colonial subject decolonize? It's 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 one of the things that you know you 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 would like to make as you know as a mental uh, note. And 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 if I was to respond in the immediate, is that at the heart of it, and and, and Gugi here agrees with us, at the heart of you know. How do we, how does a colonial subject, how do colonial subjects, how do colonial states, how colonial nations, how does colonial Africa decolonize Africa? And the power of, of that lies in imagination, the energy and the political will to imagine ourselves out of this. So that is to, 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 to not be afraid to start afresh and not to be uh, afraid to, 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 to do, you know, with, uh, to do against, uh, you know, um, our lived, you know, uh, experiences as it were. So, you know, uh, so this Africa that we live in is a brainchild of, you know, 1884 Berlin Conference where the greatest sin, you know, to humanity was discussed and said, <laughs> The division of Africa that we live in is evidently economic, uh, political, and cultural. The Berlin Conference divided Africa into different languages. Not just any language or any languages, languages of the European powers. This is true because African countries are known and defined in terms of their European colonizers, languages, and whose and, and, and the sort of image you are making, you know, uh, we define ourselves according to the languages. The oppressor, you know, defines us in accordance with these languages. So we continue to say we are, you know, francophone, uh, we are anglophone. You know, we, we are told that not so long ago at the AU, one of the biggest snag was in interpretation, you know, the French block you know, was saying, no, no, this is, this does not reflect, you know, the, the, the meeting, you know, the English block, which is the, you know, the Anglo block was, 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 you know, um, what is not, you know, was saying, no, but this is how the meet the, you know, the, the minutes should be written. And, you know, our, 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 you know, date or the chairperson of the AU at the time was obviously throwing a fit and uh, trying to leave. So these are the challenges 
um, with inheriting, you know, a uh, divided Africa, which is has been taken down uh, from without, um, you know, has been uh, determined from without, um, and continues to be determined and controlled from without. Even in the absence of the white man, uh, the, the, his instrument, that which we have inherited, as uh, Chino Achebe says, this English that we have in, inherited, continues to divide us. So as we're sitting in this conference, the, the French want to you know, say, no, but this is how it would be, or these minutes ought to reflect you know, uh, in this particular fashion. The English said, no, but this ought to be reflected in, 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 in this uh, you know, uh, fashion. So, you know, so 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 that is to something to think about, um, yeah, in as far as you know, language and its effects, you know, um, is concerned. Um, the writers that are, you know, so so in coming to the, you know, the, the writing African literature per se, he says, you know, writers that are, are meant to be mapping a way out of this linguistic, you know, encirclement of you know of their continent came to be defined and they define themselves you know in terms of the languages of imperialist imposition so 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 it's it, here this is where you know ngugi is extremely polemic you know aggressive he says you know those that have either have the gift of mapping us out of this, you know, encirclement, you know, this language or linguistic circle encirclement, you know, which continues to haunt Africa and continues to make us in the image of, you know, the master, you know, even those that are, at, are supposed to be leading the charge, they themselves participate, participate in the same or using the same tools. As there and as those of you know uh, the master, so you know they 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 not only define themselves, or not, they're not only defined, you know, using the framework of imperialism, but they also define themselves within that same framework. You hear that this is an Anglo, you know, um, writer. This is a French you know, writer, and these are African writers in African literature. Within African literature, you still have this, you know, strong presence of a blueprint of, you know, imperialism within uh, the very same, you know, intelligentsia, this very same, uh, you know, space which is supposed to be breaking, um, you know, down all these, uh, you know, these walls that you know keep this linguistic encirclement, uh, encirclement of, of 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 our continent. But these writers, you know, want to write within the very same, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, sort of borders and encirclement. So so he says, you know, these writers, even when they are at their most radical. And articulating their sentiments and the problems facing Africa, they still take it as self-evident, as axiomatic that the, re the re renaissance of African culture is dependent in the language of Europe. And here, for, for, for us, it ought to be, uh, you know, interesting. He says, even when we want to, uh, you know, engage in the renaissance of Africa, the rebirth, we take it as axiomatic. We take it as self-evident, you know, that the only way out, you know, of, you know, or the only way to the rebirth of Africa is, you know, through the languages of Europe. We still take it that the language that is going to take us out of, you know, the very, you know, uh, colonialism, the very oppression is going to be, a, a European language, which then is you know um, goes back to 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 um, to, to, to the limitation that uh, you know and uh, Google raises. So they they take it as automatic, you know, as Achebe you know does. He says, look, this language, 
this language being English, I have inherited it and I intend on using it. I am going to infuse, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to turn myself over and make sure that I infuse a part of me so that it speaks us. But Ngugi says, no, 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 you can't. You must put in the same energy, the same energy to turn and, you know, infuse yourself into African, your mother tongue, and make it speak us, make it speak to the people. Because when you do that with a European language, you, like the artifacts that have been stolen in Africa, like the figurines that have been stolen in Africa, you know, um, like the artifacts that have been stolen in Africa, they are there to adorn, to, 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 to decorate. You know, they sit in the European museum. They sit in European mansions, castles. Same would will we be, you know, we will be participating in the same action if we write in English, in these European languages, because we will be, you know, growing and, you know, expanding uh, someone else's culture, making it diverse and we're making it more of a, you know, global uh, world language, which its very roots speak against our own. This is, this is you know, uh, Ngugi's response to, 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 to Achebe's, uh, you know, uh, you know, pronouncement or his determination to use, you know, um, to use, um, you know, to use um, English. So he says, you know, you know, the, so the African, you know, the sense of African cultures is, you know, in their heads is, de is dependent um, on the use of European languages. He says, I should know. He says, I should know because I've been there. I've been writing in in those languages. So, in uh, in 1962, I was invited to a conference titled "A Conference of African um, Writers of English Expression." This was in uh, Makerere University College in Kampala, uh, Uganda. So, when Gugi was, you know, invited in uh, in um, in this um, conference, you know, of of African writers of English expression, you know, one of the things that you know, the, one of the questions that arose in the conference was, how does African literature look like? How does you know African literature, um, you know, what what language is to be given to African literature? Is it the writer who makes it African literature? Uh, is it the, you know, the language used um, to write, you know, you know, African literature that makes it African literature? Is the iconography that comes out in the text that makes it African literature? Um, so what is it that makes African literature African literature? And so for him, uh, language is what makes, you know, African literature, you know, uh, to be African literature in the fullest sense of the word. And he says, in, in this regard, as far as we have it, we do not have African literature, we have Afro-European literature. Because this literature speaks European, uh, you know, and it may be written by Africans, but in image making, it borrows and uses European images. And even if you infuse it, you are still writing in a language that speaks Europe. So when, uh, so in this case now, we, we get to the other section, uh, or rather, we're, we're still going to, or rather we're going now to, you know, the part where he speaks of, you know, the aspects of, of language. Um, and of course, now in this part, he uses a lot of anecdotes um, to explain uh, what language is, so as to you know um, make his point. Ogi says there are three aspects, or there are two aspects to language. One is communication; uh, the other is 
uh, culture. So language is used for communication, but also language is a carrier of culture. In both these two categories that make up language, he says aspects to them. In communication, there is a language of real life, um, which is the first aspect. He then says the second one is um, the, the the spoken language, which he says imitates um, language of real life or reflects language of real life. And then the third one being the written uh, uh, form, which is, um, or rather, which imitates the spoken, which is a reflection of the spoken. But he says the spoken and the written are the same thing. Um, so he says, when he begins, he says, so how do we make language? I mean, I. In he, he makes the example that we make language through our daily lives in let's take the mine workers in the, in in the mines all sorts of people come together with different languages and they make you know language through their interaction uh in in the mine through working so they will say i mean if you know fanagalog they'll say you know was tata you know you know things like that but it is the language is based on interaction is based on real life happenings it's not it's it's something which is a a, a must and it arises from you know a, from the experience uh, of life or of making life so in interaction there arises language as real you know life um then he says the spoken is a reflection of life in narrating, in uh, explaining, in uh, identifying, um, in in essence to to be able to communicate. But the spoken imitates the real life, and 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 the written then comes in, which is he says the same as the spoken. He says because if you take a piece of paper and you read it, uh, that should be easily understood uh, by the person, uh, you know, who is listening, because uh, this is the written and the spoken, they should correspond, they should do the same thing, they do the same thing. If you read a piece of paper, you're doing the same thing as the person who's speaking. And the person should be easy, should easily be able to understand what you're saying. So the written and the, the, the spoken are not far apart from the from from each other now he says in a, in a normal world those three aspects um do not are in harmony with each other so the real life experience with the spoken language which imitates the real life experience with the written which you know reflects and imitates the spoken are in harmony with each other so we are able to learn because we, it, we, we are able to learn language easily because this is a language that comes from our lived experience, our environment, real life language. So if I'm in a place where you know, a, a rock is, um, you know, called, you know, a rock by everyone there, uh, and when I play uh, with my other friends, they call the same rock, you know, uh, rock, um, you you then you know uh, have no need or no moment to pause and think about it it's a natural thing it's it's part of your environment it's easy so your spoken word and you know your 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 your, your interaction with the space is the same so he says but this becomes a problem when the child who has been doing you know uh, rustations, uh, you know, uh, who has been playing games in uh, in their mother tongue, who grew up, you know, playing with other kids in in um, in, in in his mother or her mother tongue, uh, who has been speaking in his or her mother tongue, goes to what is official education or formal education. It is at that point 
when uh, Ngugi says, you know, the harmony of communication, the harmony of the self in relation to, uh, uh, so the, the harmony of the self with the self and the harmony with the, you know, of the self with others and the harmony of the self with the environment. It is then interrupted because suddenly this which was called a rock is no longer a rock but is you know something uh, 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 called you know a brick for example but let us be more clear so i grew up knowing that this is istina and when i get to you know uh, uh, um, you know a white school i'm told no this is a, a, a brick you can't call it istina. this is a brick it's not a yes it's not a steen so he says that makes the african child or alienates the African child from his environment, from her environment. It also makes the African child flat-footed because suddenly that which he, she has known throughout his or her life is now suddenly in question. But not only is it in question, you know, it is suddenly breaking down how he or she understands himself Self in relation to the environment, to the people that he or she interacts with, um, and you know, in, in relation to his or her, you know, uh, you know, relationship with, the, the, you know, the word, uh, and you know, in this case now, the written form. So he says, in in formal education, children in um, in um, in the classroom as a way of getting them to speak English, the teacher would, I mean, this is now anecdotal, he go to his lived experience. He says, we used to be given a button uh, in, in, in our culture, say, or uh, ikosha, uh, you know, a clothing button. Um, you know, for every child, for, ev for anyone in the classroom who speaks in their mother tongue, they would be given this button. And if someone else speaks in that uh, in in their mother tongue, you would then pass on the button. So you know the the button would go for every person who has you know uh, spoken in their mother tongue would receive this button. At the end of the day, the teacher would then take would, would then ask who has the button. Say no, uh, you know Snow has the the button. Where did you get it from, Snow? I got it from uh, 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 the lady. Oh, okay, now lady, where did you get the pattern from? From Vuyan. He says, at that moment, we are being used, or rather, we are being, we are getting, we are, we are being, you know, uh, prepared or assimilated, uh, or, or or being pushed away from our community. We are beginning to become traitors, but not only that, we are begin, we are starting to become ashamed of our own language, and moving further and further away from ourselves, uh, in the in the in the in the community that we keep we suddenly you know uh, distance ourselves from those that do not inhibit or who do not demonstrate you know the mastery of the white man tools in this case language so formal education from Google at this point becomes uh, you know that point in which you know we become removed and moved away further and further away from ourselves and we are made in the image of uh, you know um, um, you know uh, the the colonizer the master as it were um, okay i see now we have passed the hour um we 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 are unable to to go on further we've got more to discuss and uh, unfortunately we've been um, you know we've tried to push as much as we can but it is a um, a very heavy text, I I would think. I hope that uh, this uh, session um, has assisted or has sparked some questions. We 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 do not try to 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 give a uh, you know top down approach, but one that is interactive, but also one that encourages that we engage in such texts. I hope if this uh, exercise has failed, it has at least you know, provoked you, or um, you know, to engage with the text and to engage with the text critically, and you know, with questions, but to understand that uh, 
the project of colonialism is one um, which is still with us um, and that we too, you know, participate in decolonizing the mind. Um, and with that said, um, thank you very much for, uh, you know, tuning in, for uh, spending the hour with us. Um, um, and, and I hope that uh, you will be, uh, you know, uh, tuned in for the next um, installation of, of of the EFF Book Club, uh, which is which seeks to encourage us all not to not only stay at home, but also to read against the virus. Thank you very much.